Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Dave. I'm a licensed podiatrist. I'd like to thank you for watching my video on my Frugal Foot YouTube channel. I had a viewer recently, he left a comment and asked if I would make a video on sesamoiditis. He goes by the name of Dominic Dominic. So thank you, Dominic Dominic. Here is that video. And if you do have a video, a suggestion, and I do make it into a video, I'll certainly leave credit where credit is due. So first off, what is a sesamoid. A sesamoid is a bone within a tendon. Now, a very common sesamoid, one that you do know the name of, is called the patella or the kneecap. That is a sesamoid. But in the foot, we're actually discussing the sesamoids that are typically below the first metatarsal head. On my foot model, this is the first metatarsal. This is the head. And on the bottom, there are these two little bones right there. These are the sesamoids. On the x-ray, it's these two little bones right there. And it's probably hard to see. We'll look at that x-ray in just a second. Sesamoids are normal bones, especially in this situation. Um, they're accessory bones. There are other sesamoids in the foot that are not necessarily important. These really are. They, they help to redirect some tendons into the bottom of the toe and they also act as a ball bearing system. So when you walk and you bend your toe to step off, those sesamoids, they rock back and forth and they prevent shearing on the bottom of the foot. Without those sesamoid bones, it's pretty likely that a large callus would develop underneath the metatarsal head. Now, sesamoiditis simply means inflammation of the sesamoid apparatus. Now, you have to differentiate sesamoiditis from a sesamoid fracture, and that's very important. Sometimes an x-ray will do that. Oftentimes, you'll need other modalities, such as a bone scan or an MRI. Now, I do want to show you this x-ray here. I'm going to bring this camera right up there so you can see it. But these are the sesamoids right here. There is the medial or tibial sesamoid, and there is the lateral or fibular sesamoid. And if you look carefully on this one, you can see it better on the oblique view. It's actually in two pieces. Now, this could be a fracture or this could be congenital, meaning that this individual may have been born that way. And it's very difficult to know the difference without those other modalities. But it's important that you know that because you're going to treat them differently. If this is a sesamoid fracture, it certainly is going to be necessary for some sort of offloading, whether it's in a offloading shoe or a offloading boot or, and when I say offloading, I mean that there's no pressure on the front. So they sell these surgical shoes with no front or a surgical boot with no front or even a cast with crutches because you want to cool that fracture down and let, let it heal. Whereas if it is simply sesamoiditis and it's just inflammation of the apparatus, like for example, turf toe, if you violently flex your toe up in the air, you can irritate those sesamoids. You can irritate, irritate the ligaments in there. Or maybe it's just hard pounding on those bones. They can become irritated. And so you want to allow the inflammation, the itis, to calm down. How do you do that? Well, some doctors may recommend anti-inflammatories. Um, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good start. Uh, sometimes they may recommend a cortisone injection and that has its advantages as well as some disadvantages. Now, I like looking at this from a mechanical perspective. Here is a simple pad that you can do in the, at your home that can take pressure off of that area as well. It's called a dancer's pad and I made a video on how you can build one of these at home and I'll leave a link to that video so you can check it out yourself but when you do this you want to apply it underneath the first metatarsal head so on this particular insole here's where the foot would rest and this is the area right here where that sesamoid apparatus would be this is where I want to put that cutout so that the sesamoid apparatus fits in that space right there. Not here. It has to fit in here so that the pressure is being born here 
and here. Now, if you put this on the top of the arch support, you, you may, you're likely to push it off with your foot and roll it off into the front of the shoe. That's not gonna work very well. So the way that I like doing this, I like turning the insole upside down and then applying it on the bottom this way. I'm gonna use this one just so that I can show you how it would work like this. And then you can peel the back of this adhesive off and that way it'll stick right there and you put this back in your shoe and now you're bearing weight without putting a lot of pressure on that sesamoid apparatus because of that padding there. So that's a simple thing to do. All you'll need is a roll of adhesive felt and some good scissors and I'll leave a link to those um, items below the video so that you can get that yourself if you need to. Probably the most important take-home advice that I can give you regarding sesamoiditis is that four-letter word, rest. I know that people don't like hearing that. You want to get on top of this quickly. Don't let it, don't let the symptoms exacerbate themselves. Otherwise, it becomes that much more difficult to treat. Padding system, yes, that's kind of like active rest, but that's really, really important that you take the pressure off of this area to allow that to heal. If that means that you need to be in a cast or a walking boot, so be it. See your doctor, get the appropriate diagnosis so that you can get the appropriate, appropriate treatment plan in place. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm Dr. Dave, and I'll see you on my next video.